Hey, good morning, rock stars. It's Rox. I'm coming to you today um, with the top of the blogs extra. Decided to separate this out of my regular top of the blogs video. Definitely want to talk about the issues for sure. So, yeah, we just separated it out. We'll talk about all the fool of fucking niggatry on the regular top of the blogs video later on today. Now, if you've been hiding under a rock, that's the only way that you don't know about the two shootings that happened uh, this week. It's so funny, or I shouldn't say it's funny, but it's just crazy that these shootings seem to happen in twos lately, right? We had Alton uh, Sterling and um, Philando Castile that got killed. Um, is it Castile, I believe? They, that was killed. Um, you know, not even, I don't even feel like it's been a month yet. It may have been though. And now this week we have the killings by the hands of the police of uh, Keith Scott and Terrence Crutcher. So um, giving you some background on what happened. First, Terrence Crutcher. He was on a street in Tulsa, Oklahoma. His vehicle, his SUV had broken down and evidently he had pulled over or actually it looked like it had stopped in the middle of the street and he was trying to um, work on his vehicle. Uh, there was a call supposedly to the police that said there was a man in the middle of the street yelling about his vehicle or something um, saying that it was going to blow up and they wanted the police to check on it. Uh, the police did respond. Betty Shelby in particular was the um, I don't think she was the first responding officer. However, uh, there were four officers that was there and after some sort of exchange between Betty Shelby and uh, Terrence Crutcher, uh, she opted to use lethal force and shot and killed him when his hands were clearly up, he was not approaching the police, and didn't seem to pose a threat if you're looking from the video. Of course, the video from the police footage was released and um, people were very upset after they heard the comments of the helicopter from above. I don't know if that was a police helicopter or if that was a news helicopter, however, uh, the gentlemen in the in the helicopter were commenting on the, um, you know, the suspect, Terrence, calling him, uh, you know, looked like he was a, a pretty bad dude, okay, and that he needed to be tasered. And, um, you know, maybe he may be on something. Now, this is all from how many hundreds of feet in the air you're watching this from the helicopter. How is it that you can, you know, come to this conclusion that he is indeed a bad dude? Okay, I think somebody has said, I'm not sure if it's true or not, but someone said that someone in the helicopter was actually related to the Betty Shelby on the ground. That sounds like too much of a coincidence to me. Again, I don't know for sure. At any rate, Terrence Crutcher was killed right there on the spot after she fired one single shot and another police officer tasered him. And then the outrage started. You know, when you see the video, I, like I said, it just doesn't look like he was posing any type of threat. Now, you can't hear what's going on, um, but there is some back and forth. You know, he kind of looks like he comes towards them, and then he walks away from them, and they're all coming towards him. And like I said, one of the police officers did have a taser out, so it seems like that would have been the proper protocol, considering that this man um, was not charging them. Now, Betty Shelby did say that she felt like he was um, scary and that he was going to do something to her. So that is why she pulled the gun and pulled the trigger. As a matter of fact, her lawyer, I want to, I want to, I wrote it down what the lawyer said because it's going to piss you off even more. The attorney for Betty Shelby said that Terrence Crutcher had a very hollow look in his face, sort of like a thousand yard stare, and she could tell that he was not normal. You guys, I'm telling you, it's just open season on black people, black men in particular, but black people, I mean, the police, I, I just, you know, these police are so afraid of black people that their very first thought is that they're going to do something to them and that they must kill them. That is the only response. I mean, the fact that none of the other police had their guns pulled and that one of them had a taser, at least two of them felt like they didn't need to have any force and one of them didn't feel that there was lethal force needed, okay? All three of them didn't feel like there was lethal force needed only Betty Shelby. The family now, of course, is very upset um, because uh, there's been all types of spins on it since it's happened. The police department have come out and said that, um, you know, Betty Shelby felt like he was reaching into his vehicle um, for a gun and uh, that's why she shot. However, the window is rolled up and you can see it on the video and you can see that uh, there's blood splattered on the window. 
Um, so there's no way that he could be going into his car unless he was going to be busting the window out, which he did not do, okay? She clearly shot him while he was just set, standing there with his hands up. Now that it looks like that rumor has been dispelled, now they're saying that there was some PCP in the vehicle. And the family has also denied that and said that um, Terrence Crutcher was not on PCP. There are people that saying that even if they are on drugs, you know, a person that you feel threatened by, that is not an excuse to use lethal force so frustrating because you can see clearly on the video that he was not charging those people that he had his hands in the air and that he was shot in cold blood so that is terrence crutcher's story okay of course there's going to be more and more that comes out about that not even a day or so later in charlotte north carolina keith scott i'm going to give you the side of the police um first keith scott was in a car in a vehicle Parked, okay, the police department was responding to um, they were actually on the search for a suspect and they were in this certain neighborhood that unfortunately Keith Scott was in as well. Um, when they saw Keith Scott, they mistook him for the suspect that they were searching for. Um, they say that Keith Scott got out of his vehicle, that um, he had a gun in his hand. Um, when they told him to put his hands up a couple of times, I guess they're saying that he got back in the vehicle because in the article that I read, um, they're saying that he got out of the vehicle a second time, he had this gun, and um, after they couldn't get him to respond to them, he would not say anything to them that they shot and killed him. Now this time he was killed by a black police officer by the name of Brentley Vincent. Again, Outrage was sparked, okay, because if you listen to the side of the family, they're saying that Keith Scott was sitting in his vehicle reading his book like he always would do when he was picking up his daughter who was getting off of a school bus. He was waiting for her to get off of a school bus. He was reading his book quietly, and then the police happened upon him, and that's when the confusion started. They said he got out of the car, that he had his book in his hand, and that, you know, that he was cooperating with the police, and that the police still shot and killed him. They say that there is some body cam footage that some of the police officers had on. However, the police department is not releasing that footage until the investigation is uh, complete. And they're citing some court case, some court order that says that they don't have to release this footage. Okay. The ACLU is telling them that no, you have to release the footage because that doesn't go into effect until October 1st. Okay. And we are clearly still in September. That means that they should be releasing this footage. We know from past experiences that the longer that police department hold on to footage in cases like this where there may be some, you know, some mishandling of information or proof of what did or did not happen, um, nobody wants the police department to be holding on to this evidence until the damn investigation is over. So once the man was shot and killed, um, his daughter, who soon after got off of the bus, saw what had happened and on her video, you know, she was yelling, she was screaming, clearly distraught. Her father is dead right there in the middle of, uh, um, you know, the, the street where he was. And she is recording and saying, don't plant a gun on him. You know, he doesn't have a gun. That's what the fuck you guys do. And, you know, she's going on and on. It's just a terrible video. Both of the videos, Terrence Crutcher and um, um, Keith Scott, are just horrible to watch. Something about when you see the emotions of the family members, it's just so raw and so clearly. Um, his daughter, the first person of the family to come up upon, you know, the father being dead like that, it's just, it's, it's just terrible and it's unnerving and it's just frustrating because you don't know what the fuck to do anymore, okay? They tell you to put your hands up and you do and that doesn't work. Okay, they tell you not to resist the arrest. Okay, and you do that and that doesn't work. Okay, they tell you to protest. You do that and that doesn't change anything. They tell you to pray for the situation. You do that and that doesn't seem to work. It is so frustrating because there is absolutely seems to be no, no answer to what exactly is happening to underrepresented communities, black communities in particular. Um, with these police, okay, so one is a white woman that killed um, Terrence Crutcher. The second story is a black man that killed um, Keith Scott. 
the common denominator here is that they're both police officers, okay? And I think that it is the culture of the police department to jump to certain conclusions and not know how to de-escalate a situation, even in moments when there's no reason to de-escalate. Like, it's not even, it hasn't even grown that big yet, you know? I just, <clears throat> it's, you just don't know what to do, okay? So in Charlotte, North Carolina, these people are pissed. So they are protesting. They are rioting. I woke up this morning to see that someone was killed. Was, well, they said that there was a protester that was shot and killed. Uh, they later retracted that. And as of I'm doing this video this morning, they're saying that that person was not killed, but the person is on life support. So they're in critical condition fighting for their lives. Uh, they're saying that that person was killed by another civilian and not by the police. Um, but there's confusion, there's chaos, okay? The police have thrown tear gas out on these people. You know, tear gas has the, t has the tendency to piss people off and get people even more riled up. And, you know, it's, it is so fucking frustrating, okay? And that's what really pisses you off about the fact that, um, you know, people have all these reasons why Colin Kaepernick should not be standing up or should I say taking a kneel when the national anthem is played because, you know, according to some people, racism doesn't even exist. And even if it does exist, you know, this is not the proper way to do it. Then what the fuck is the proper way? Okay, maybe white people who agree that there's some problems with the police department, maybe they can chime in and tell us how to fix the problem. Because obviously the black people, the way we doing it, we, you know, we just can't quite figure out what what it is that we need to do to stay alive you know just driving down the street um having a vehicle that's broken down waiting in the car waiting for their child to get off the bus just like dl Hughley said and actually it was a model that said it originally um who said that she wished that um you know there would be so much outrage when black people are killed um that these you know, I'm not saying all white people, but certain white people feel when Colin Kaepernick doesn't stand up for the national anthem. It was like such a perfect analogy for her to put out there because here we are right now. Like, this is all happening at the same time. Where is your Jerry Rice's now and your other, all your other black celebrities and um, 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 athletes in particular who has so much to say about Colin Kaepernick, you know, doing what he does Okay, now that we got even two more people, and this is just caught on video, you guys. This doesn't, doesn't mean that it ain't happening in other places, other states, other cities. But here it is in your face again. So, so now what exactly would you guys like them to do? Okay, it doesn't even seem like Colin Kaepernick's taking a kneel um, should be that big a deal in the grand scheme of things. Okay, a peaceful protest should be uh, welcomed compared to the shit that's going on, you know, in these communities as people are rioting and trying to protest and just get their voices heard. I honestly don't know what would be the, what would, what, what, what needs to happen. I mean, when you have the president of the United States um, and people in government saying things like this has to stop. You know, that's actually kind of, um, th that makes you feel, to me, it makes me feel hopeless because even the fucking president can't change it. You know, it's just like, what? We got people out here that have guns that are supposed to serve and protect and, and uh, they work for us as a taxpayer in the community that we live in that are just going out and taking lives. Left and right, you guys. And then, you know, when we talk about the entire United States, you know, you say this is just one or two incidents, but you just have to know that these are just incidents that was caught on video. And that is happening way more, way more. You know, so it's frustrating. It's frustrating for black people. Um, it's frustrating for some white folks that understand what the, you know, what the entire problem is. But I think it's frustrating for everybody because nobody really knows how to fix it. Definitely, I feel that the culture, um, the police culture needs to change. But it's been like this for years, you guys. I mean, I can remember my dad telling me about my uncle. Now, back then he wasn't killed, but, you know, my, my uncle was beat up by the police, um, you know, back in the 70s. And I have a friend who's father was killed by the police back in the 70s and it's definitely stuff that has happened and you've heard stories in your own family um where the police have time and time again done some foul fucked up ass shit to people um it just now seems like it's gotten to a point where they don't even you know they don't even fuck you up no more they kill you and um yes it's very frightening for our children um black boys and girls but boys of 
course in particular because like I said these police officers are afraid of black men they just have a hard time reconciling in their mind that this person does not intend to do me any harm fuck you got the gun if I don't have a gun and you pointing it at me I'm going to I mean what do you have to do now it's almost to the point where you have to fucking lay down and play dead already so that the police know that okay I'm laid out my hands is here let me have them out I'm not moving you damn near almost can't even breathe I didn't even read up much about the stories until yesterday because I just oh I tell you you guys I get tired of even talking about it on these videos because it just seems like we talking and we talking and we protesting, we doing this and doing it, and the shit ain't changing. So, you guys leave your comments about it. Suggestions. I know that somebody on my Twitter told me that they actually have suggestions. But what what is it going to take uh, for people? It seems like it's so inbred in from generations to generations to generations. You know, it's so many wrongs that needed to be righted. And that, you know, that you've got to go back and unteach shit that's been taught to people over the years, you know. I don't know. I don't know. But you guys, I, I got to I got to get off of here because I have got to get on to work. But uh, I wanted to talk about this um, because it needs to be talked about. But it needs to be something else, too. And if you guys know what that something else is, y'all leave it in the comments below. All right, you guys, I got to get off of here. Um, like I said, top of the blogs will be up later on today. You guys know the whole drill. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'm It's Rocks. Channels for It's Rocks. Everything else I do is in the bottom bar. All right. All right. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.